Hello dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to another gear overview, review, tutorial, explanation video. My name is Jesse, and today we are going to be talking about the color spikes. Now, when you rent this from me, you get four of these things. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, crack open one kit, take a look at what it is and how it works and then we will get into how four of them can link together to make uh, the firework lighting spectacular that you're dreaming of. We got the soft case inside. You will find on top uh, a little bag with um, two barn doors in it that have seen, there we go, two barn doors. Beyond that, uh, you've got the actual color spike You've got a bit of diffusion, and I mean a bit of diffusion. I'm thinking that we might do better with, a, you know, I'll grab some, some white cloth, some kind of silk, some, some diffusion that can go on the barn doors that will create a wider spread than this thing. But this is better for softening. It's better than nothing if you want to soften it. You've got um, the adapter that goes into the color spike. You've got the wall plug that goes into the adapter. Three prong, three prong. Remember that it's three prong. Um, you have a little thingamajig to put it on light stands. And yes, forgot to mention, you get four light stands with the rental because what good are lights without light stands? You get this funky wonky bonky thing that I'll show you how to use in a minute. And I'm, <laughs> I shouldn't have called that the funky wonky bonky thing because there is a funkier wonkier, bonkier thing, and that is this. I have not used it. I have, there we'll get a close up of it. I have worked with other gaffers, grips, guys who do lighting, guys who do shows, stuff like that, and we all have no idea what this was meant to be when the guys from Color Spike invented it. And yeah, so that, that makes a case Plus bag with barn doors is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine objects in each case, depending on if you count the barn doors in the bag as one object or three, could be up to 12, whatever. That's how you count it, but those are all the things. Let's talk about the color spike because it is a unique piece of gear where the inventors decided, uh, rather boneheadedly, I might add, to go full proprietary, there's no quarter inch thread, there's no eighth inch thread on here that you could plop it onto a light stand very easily. What you have are these rails on either side. And how that works is you've got, you, you loosen these screws a little bit, so now you've got that, that rod, and you kind of finagle it in there. And then you screw these two, and now that's, that's tight. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna slide up or down or either way. And you can put this um, on either side. You can put it on this side, you can put it on this side. You can have the knuckle facing to the back of the device here, or you can have the knuckle facing to the front of the device if you want. I typically have it to the back because I want to use the front for uh, throwing light. Call me crazy, that's just what it is. Um, quick complication on that. is when you're trying to put the barn doors on, if you also want to use the attachment knuckle, sorry, if you also want to use the attachment knuckle, you gotta be a little bit clever about it. So, to get the barn doors on, again, you have these little, these little bars that go on the rail. To get the barn doors and the knuckle, you put on, you wrestle with it to get on a barn door, then you put on the knuckle, then you put on the other half of the barn door, because proprietary design is always better than industrial standards. I swear these startups, they get one knucklehead idea, they wanna reinvent the wheel and then they make a parallelogram and tell us to deal with it. All right, so now the barn door is on firmly. You can open it, close it to any angle and it will stay, very, very convenient and the knuckle's on firmly, so you're all good there. Um, I am gonna chuck on the other barn door just because I really love to party. Now, the real reason is I like symmetry. 
And if we're gonna have one barn door, let's have two barn doors, hey. And then you'll see, like once they're on, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's like, it's a, it's a good device. So now you can, you know, open them up. You can really focus the light if you want, punch it in, however you please. So that's the basic, the basic setup of the actual unit itself. From there, let's just leave that like that. Um, the adapter for the light stand. Again, they just had to get too clever to be practical. So it's got these little teeth in and you've got to unlock it enough that you can move those teeth around. And you know, it's, it's useful. I mean, it locks in place, but it's one of those things where it's like, really, did we, did we have to? Was it absolutely necessary? Um, and then you just slide it on and screw this in and tighten it. And now you are light stand ready and you've got kind of full mobility. You can go left and right. And with this circular knuckle up here, you can rotate to a degree. Eventually this, this guy is gonna, gonna hit the wall over there. So you've got uh, left and right. You've got this axis, X, Y, and Z axis, whatever. I don't know. And of course you can rotate it on the, the light stand and raise it up and down. However, you see fit. Um, quick word about the power supply and why I was so clear about the three prong. The color spike does have an internal battery. That is true. Would I rely on this battery for a day of filming? Absolutely not. I never would. I, and I would be remiss to advise you to. I think you get like 45 minutes, maybe an hour on a full charge and that's if the battery is good. Not all the batteries are good in color spikes. Some of them are, you know, dodgy. So I would not rely on the batteries. Now it's like, it's good to have the battery because you can swap out. Like if you need to unplug it for five minutes and grab a stinger, that's an industry term for, uh, 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 I don't know what. Um, then you can leave it on the, the battery power for five, 10 minutes while you, while you get your stinger. Um, and that's useful, but you aren't gonna be shooting a whole day with it just on battery. Let's talk about functionality. Let's talk about light, shall we? All right, welcome to the Color Spike interface. I'm gonna to try to get this a little bit closer. There we go. Welcome to the Color Spike interface. So you got your on off switch. Now it's on and we should be seeing a red light. I'm gonna leave the diffusion right here so you have something white on camera C that you can see what we're talking about. Um, this device is very intuitive. Considering how minimal the interface is, you get a lot, you get a lot of control. So right now we're on a single color, left and right. You see how we have these little dots down here? Left and right will move us throughout those dots and up and down will adjust that value. So we've got brightness, hue, saturation, and our uh, default color. So let's, let's just go with mint green because why not? Lovely. Um, and we can, we can adjust everything. We can bring the brightness down considerably and we can blast it back up. And you're seeing it's, it's very responsive. Like it feels good. The software is really, really nice inside these devices. Um, hue, very fun. That will just rotate you around the rainbow wheel. And saturation, you can blast the saturation and you can minimize the saturation. Pretty cool stuff. Um, this button will bring, this hamburger button will bring up your menus. So let's take a look at the menus. We got um, solid color, and that'll give you your, your aquamarines, your blushes. We've got uh, solid whites, and this is broken down by color temperature, daylight, tungsten, then your 28K, 45K, whatever. Um, look. These are not 1 billion percent accurate. You'll have to do some, some adjustment on your camera and do bring a white card if you're trying to get pure white. If you're trying to blast color, these things are great for, color, for blasting color right off the shelf. If you're trying to get pure white, you're gonna be noodling with the, set, the settings for a minute or two. And again, you have your brightness, uh, your color temperature, 
tint strength, tint hue. But let's get into something a little more fun, and that is the animated stuff. Now this is terrific fun. Um, you got all your different, like uh, your base levels of animation, and you, you have in the app, you can develop, you can program your own animations however you like. That said, um, the, the built-in, the templates are so robust, I use them, I, I, we just use them. Like when I'm taking them out on set, it's easier to use the built-in presets because there's just enough variety, there's just enough wacky different ideas that, um, that, that, that we're fine, we're fine. We've got so many different types of lights that it's cool. I'm um, just running through some of them, neon signs. So you get some idea of, of what the different colors look like. Neon steps, that one's fun. And what I'd like to do is blast the, oops. oh, and you can change the speed for animation, which is very cool. We're gonna make it brighter. All right, so that that's how you do your onboard settings. Um, the fun of the color spike doesn't end with the onboard settings. The color spikes are at their best when you have four of the... I'm just going to say four because that's the number I'm giving you. When you have a bunch of them daisy-chained together and you're controlling them from the app. So what we're going to do is take a break from this video. We're going to get out four color spikes and set them up and we're going to be jumping between the app and the video feed so that you can see how that works because it's really... it's... it's a dream. <laughs> we are back and now we have uh, four color spikes. All of them are turned on. And what you might not be able to see because the, the, uh, they're so gosh darn bright is that two of them are set to white, one of them is set to orange, and then the other has an animation pattern going. So what we're gonna do is fire up the app, get all four of these in sync with each other, and then show you kind of the basic walkthrough of how the app works. Download it uh, before <laughs> you shoot, because you don't want to be stuck on, stuck on some sound stage out in the middle of nowhere uh, without, without any reception trying to download that app. Uh, you don't need any passwords or anything. It automatically detects. This is one of the best auto detections I've ever worked with. I mean, you're looking around the studio, you're seeing a whole bunch of GoPros. Those are a nightmare. For years, GoPros have been an absolute nightmare to tether with the phone. Pretty much everything I've used that is wireless, Bluetooth, or whatever, has been a nightmare to tether with the phone. These guys are butter. You will have no trouble. I promise you, from the bottom of my heart to the top of yours, I promise you, these things are the, the best syncing I've, experience I've ever had. So what we're gonna do is fire up the app. We've got the four color spikes turned on and they're all set to white, they've all been reset. What we wanna do is connect them to our, our controller app and that could not be easier. Go through and tap connect with each one. Now already, I've just been doing this tutorial for 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was, and you can already see that the batteries are starting to drain down. So, um, you know, told you so. But it is very easy. It will auto-detect. Uh, the software recognizes the devices instantaneously. It's very, very convenient. Very easy. Easier than, than most every um, phone to device tethering that I've ever done. So now we've got them all connected. Let's move into the controller function, remotes, and start making sure that everything is working. All right, so we've got them connected and we can adjust the brightness for all four devices with the slider. Um, and you can scroll through and you get a preview of whatever the, whatever the thing is, whatever the pattern is. So let's go double siren, rock and roll. And for the animated patterns, you can control the brightness, but you can also control the speed. So now it's going much, much slower. If, you, if they aren't all syncing immediately, if they aren't all doing the same thing as you use this app, make sure as you swipe to the right, you can see that um, they can become ungrouped and you can control them individually outside of that group. Also double check in here that all four of them are checked and all four of them have this little hourglass icon uh, uh, turned to yellow. So there is, there is a lot in this software. There's more than I could possibly get into. 
Um, I just wanted to give you the quick general overview so that you would not be surprised when you open it up. It's up to you to kind of jump in and do the deep dive and figure out all the features and all the programmability of these four guys and how you can uh, daisy chain them and how you can really, really maximize your time with these devices on set. So we're gonna close out. I'm gonna give myself some evil lighting and then I will say a few words of goodbye. Thank you for watching this tutorial from the beginning to the end. If you are just watching it to learn, then I'm glad I could help you out a little bit. If you're watching it to rent this gear, double thank you for giving a good goddamn of how the equipment works. I do appreciate it. Hope to talk to you soon. Thank you for watching this not a one, not a three, but a two-torial. Bye.